Hello guys and welcome to today's episode of Hansen Classic Cars. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this car. I actually found this car in a barn. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put the link here on the top of this video. Please make sure to watch that. And before we go any further, just let me say, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel with old vintage cars and, you know, like information and stuff, please go down and push the subscribe button. It will mean a lot to me. But for today's episode, I'm going to take off the hood. I'm going to go through with you guys how you set up the ignition system on these old SARPs and how you check that's set up correctly. We're going to take a look at the engine, see how that's how that are doing. We're going to just give it a sort of a run through all the way around. Maybe there are some bits and pieces missing I need to order. So it's going to be a good one today. So stay tuned. It will be amazing, let me tell you. Okay guys, I just disassembled the hood here on my old Sark and I think we're gonna start out by checking out the ignition. If you have seen my other video, you have seen that the car definitely runs. So I know it's not completely off, but it's always a good thing with, with these old cars. Definitely if they've been sitting for many, many years to check the timing of the ignition. Also due to the fact that if it's, the timing is a bit off, you can put some extra stress on your spark plugs, you can put some extra stress on your, your pistons. So I will definitely always recommend, let's start out with, with just checking the timing of the ignition. But before I go any further with that, I need some tools. Okay guys, I just brought my tools here and um, yeah, let's take a look at this. It's actually the way with these old Saab engines is that the second cylinder and you can actually see it's written here on the block second first and third the second cylinder has to be in on on top you could say here on the top of the block and there's actually some markings here that's nice to know as well because if i set my wrench here on the engine i can actually turn it and second thing here that's nice really nice to know Make sure that your ignition switch is off when you do this because you don't want the engine to start while you're turning it because this one can take off a hand or you can damage yourself quite badly. So safety first, guys. But there's actually a marking here on this lower part. Let's see if I can find it. It comes up there, actually. And that marking has to be on the upper marking here then I know this cylinder is on the top of the block, which it should be. Then I can take off the, the cap here. This is where my screwdriver comes in handy. I'm just going to re remove these real quickly. Yeah. Take that off. Here is also two markings. There's a mark on the rotator and there's a mark on this lower half. These two have to line up exactly the same. Then I know the base sort of ignition timing is right on this engine okay guys now it's time to take off the top of this bad boy to check the bars and see how it's doing you know inside the engine so uh, i'm gonna need some more tools but uh, stay tuned you are my sanctuary you're all i need for the first time I
Okay, guys, I just flipped the camera so you can see what I'm seeing here right now. I took the top of the engine off and now we can see the pistons more clearly. I can definitely see there's been some wear and tear. That's that that that's for certain. But let's uh, let's turn her over and see um see if there's any like sort of weird stuff going on. But uh, let's try this. Just give me a second here. I need this one right here and let's see if I can sort of feel out if there should be like any if I take someone that's going up feels all right I will say uh, feels like it should more or less moves quite freely actually the boards also look okay Definitely okay here. Second one's, you know, it's the third one going down right here. Let's see if I can feel this one when this one is coming back up again. But I will definitely say it wouldn't be a bad thing to change the bushings here inside the engine at the point because I don't know how many years it has run or if I can even trust the, the, the meter inside the car because this is actually a fun fact. The later model engines on these old Sarp came with the two-stroke engine, came with 12 bolts on the top piece here. If you have an engine there's before 1960, 61, it have only eight, eight of them. But back in the day, they quickly found out that the version with only eight become, became sort of a little bit unstable and it was hard to maintain and was hard to keep it running. So they changed it out with this 12 system instead. I know this car for a fact is from 1960 and I've, think it has a replacement engine in it because this is a newer model engine it's not the old one but um, that's fine by me but but that's sort of nice to know with these old sarps another thing i definitely have to check and you guys have to check with me is i know these top pieces can bend and be bended and they can for a ton of reasons it can happen because someone have tried to sort of oh, oh, oh. Someone have tried to give it a tune up or something or just wear and tear. So I definitely have to check if if this still are squared because if it isn't and you put the gasket in, you will fill the engine with water and not a good thing. So um, we're going to check this as well. Stay tuned. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Last thing here, but not the least, the gasket actually looks a bit old. I will definitely say. Maybe it's time for me to go out and buy, see if I can get a new one. Because, you know, an old gasket usually means that water can sift into the, the bores here. And uh, it's I won't do that to this old beautiful car. So I think I'm going to go out and, and buy a new gasket as well. Okay, guys. Now I'm here. It's actually where I sort of do metal work and do panels and stuff but it's like it's the squarest thing i have in the workshop right now i have the two actually have two different pieces here i have the one i just took out of the vehicle and which you can see there's a lot of old grease and dirt here and it's it's in a bit rough condition i will say but um i will definitely try to, to take much of it off and sort of see if i can it's, it can be extremely hard to see if it's sort of square. It looks okay, actually, I will say. It definitely looks okay. I can take it a little over here. Looks sort of square. It's hard to say for a fact. Maybe there's a little there, but looks okay. I have another one as well, which is of an uh, old engine. I have here in the garage, and here I can see there's definitely some issues. 
you can hear it, it rubbles. And that means that it's maybe not that square. Let's see if the same with this one. No. There's not much rubbling going around here. Okay, it's time for me to take some of this old gunk away and sort of, you know, give it some love. I actually use just a knife to sort of scrape away all of this. It's just old gasket, actually. It's just like old grease and stuff sitting here. And it's... Okay, guys, I just gave this one a ton of love and uh, it looks okay, actually. Let's just check it real quick here and see if it's still sort of... Yeah, there's no wobbling around going on right here. It's always difficult with these old pieces here. And all of this and say, if you have a car like mine, you know, take care of this because it's extremely hard to get new. And you can actually get it new, so you have to buy it second hand if it is. But um, yeah, I think it's good to go right now. It just needs maybe a little, little tender and care here on the top. And um, let's throw in the new gasket and let's put the engine back together again here. Okay, guys, the top is back on here. I just need all the pins. Just before I'm gonna sort of start assembling this, I would just recommend give the pins a little grease so it's easier to take it apart again if you have to sort of change something or you have to do a renovation later down the line. So for now it's just putting all of these back in again. Okay guys, the engine is almost put together again here. Just before we're gonna try to crank it, I will uh, talk a little bit how you place these so they be in the right order. As I mentioned before, this one is number three, this is number, number three, number two, and number one. And if you see here, this can only be placed in one way. So the, you don't have to worry about it being the opposite way around or something. It only fits this way if it's a saw part. Notice that. This one right here is the third. It's like this that points this direction outward and it goes on the third here on the engine. This one here which faces towards the engine here on the inside, this is actually a little bit longer cable right now. Maybe I should change that. I think I will do here real quickly. So it matches the length as well. This one right here is number two. 
So you take that and place it over number two here. Yeah, there it is. So two, third, and the long one here, that is number one. That's the one in the bottom. So that's the last one. It just actually goes, I put mine under this, but of course you can also take it over. It depends. Yeah. Okay, guys, this is it for today's video. Of course, in, let me just take this down. In, I will be back with more videos. I will be back with more stuff with this old beautiful vintage car, this old Sarp, when I sort of tackle a couple of other things that are missing on this, this vehicle. There's some things in the interior. There are some outer things. There are some mod flaps. There is, there's a ton of things. So uh, there's definitely is gonna be more videos like this one. Um, feel free as always, if you have comments, if you have questions regarding old cars, it could be your own vintage car, please leave them in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible with, with answers. As I always say, if I don't have the answer to your question and your model of car, I definitely know a guy who knows a guy or knows another guy who has the expertise regarding that specific vehicle. So feel free, post a comment, and um, I will see you guys in another video. You have a good one. Bye.